Okay, so let's talk about complex fractions. What is a complex fraction? Well, a complex fraction is like a fraction within a fraction. So here's an example right here. Simplify 4m squared times n over m times n divided by 12. So hopefully you see there's a fraction in the denominator, and then we have this whole big fraction. So we have a fraction within a fraction. So what we're going to do is look at this in two pieces. We're going to consider 4m squared n over 1. Do you see that's the same as what I have for the numerator? So this is the same as this. Do you believe me? Hopefully you do. And I'm going to highlight the denominator. Okay, so I have a fraction divided by a fraction. How do we handle that? Well, what I like to do is I like to look at each piece separately. I have a numerator and a denominator, and they both have fractions. So I like to do it in two steps. The first thing is we rewrite the fraction in the numerator of my big fraction. Okay, so I'm going to put an equal sign, and I'm going to rewrite the fraction that is in the numerator. Okay, then number two, we will multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to go and put this in parentheses. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. So let's just take a step back and make sure we know what we're doing. I have one fraction right here, one big fraction. The numerator I have written as a fraction. It wasn't as clear when I just had 4m squared n, but if I write 4m squared n divided by 1, then this is another fraction. It's really easy to see. And then here's looking at the big fraction. My denominator of the big fraction is also a fraction. So I'm going to roll, uh, multiply by the reciprocal of this. Reciprocal just means 1 over that value. We say reciprocal. We are going to flip that fraction. Okay, because if I have a over b, and I look at b over a, those are reciprocals of each other. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which means I'm going to flip the fraction. This 12 in the denominator is going to be my numerator of my new fraction. And then the m times n that was in the numerator will be in my denominator. And I'm multiplying those. So I'm just going to continue down here. I have 4m squared n over 1. Just going to rewrite it so I can do a few things. Times 12 over mn. And I'm going to scroll down just a bit. So we are going to rewrite this. I'm just showing you this to make sure you see what's happening. Hopefully you see that I can multiply 4m squared times n. I could write it as 4 times m times m times n like that. Times 12 over m times n. And you may be wondering, where did that 1 go? You can still put it there, but 1 times m is still m. Okay, and then we have a rule from algebra. Here's a fun rule that says if you have a over a, it's equal to 1. So that means if I have a factor in the numerator that's the same as in the denominator and everything is multiplied together, they cancel. So for example, there's an m here, and here's an m here. Those will cancel because I can look at that as m over m. This. 4 over 1, I can look at m over m, and then m times n times 12 over n. I can multiply all of these things. So do you see that this piece right here gives me a 1? That's all we're doing here when we're canceling. Okay, we can also do the same thing with the n's, right? There is an n in the numerator and an n in the denominator. There's an n right here and an n right here. So over here I could really write this as there's an m over 1 and I have an n over n and I still have a 12. I can multiply all those pieces. So the n over n will reduce. This becomes a 1. So they cancel, right? So hopefully you see that I really just have 4 times m times 12. And this is all multiplied together, so we're going to use the commutative property. The commutative property says that if we multiply a times b, that's the same as multiplying b times a. 
So I'm going to do it in two steps. So I could really write this as 4 times, I'm going to flip these guys, right? 12 times m. And then we can combine these two numbers right here. Well, what's 4 times 12? 48, and we still have the m. So there you go. Try another one. Simplify. We have another complex fraction. So we have one big fraction. I'm going to draw the fraction bar. This is called the vinculum, just for fun. That's a fun word. Vinculum. And then we have a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. So this part right here is the numerator. And this part down here is the denominator. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did before. We have a fraction divided by a fraction. Our process is to, number one, rewrite the fraction in the numerator. Number two, then we're going to multiply that, multiply part one, by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. So here we go. We're going to rewrite the fraction in the numerator. So we have 5x squared y cubed over AB. I'm going to put that in parentheses. So that one stays exactly the same. Do you see that? This one stays exactly the same. So that's this part. Okay, now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. I want the reciprocal of that. Again, what does reciprocal mean? It just means if I have a fraction, I flip the numerator and denominator to get its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by AB because AB was in the denominator of the denominator. And I'm going to put the piece that was in the numerator of this denominator as my new denominator. 30x cubed y squared, like this. So what we've done here is we've taken the reciprocal. We have flipped the two pieces. Do you see that? Okay, and if you want to, we can write this as one big fraction. 5x squared y cubed times AB. And then we have AB times 30 x cubed y squared. You can do that if you want to. And really, I know a lot of you sometimes really like to write the little dots. You don't need to anymore. They're all written side by side. We assume they're multiplied. Okay, but you can still write them if you want to. So then we're going to try to reduce this, right? So let's start with the obvious ones. We have an a here in the numerator and in the denominator. And notice this is all multiplication, so I'm allowed to just cancel those. Okay? So I'm going to go through and I'm going to cancel this A with this A. Okay, if you notice, I also have a B in the numerator and a B in the denominator. So I'm going to cancel those. Cancel the B, cancel the B. So I'm just going to do this in a couple of steps just to make sure I, everybody sees what I'm doing. So if you want to, you can, re, can sort of reorder things. It's like I have an A here and an A here. Put all this multiplied together times this times B over the. If, the. if that's easier for you to see, you can do that. That's all I'm doing is I'm saying this comes from here and here, and A divided by A is 1, okay? And the same thing with the B over B, it's 1. Okay, so these cancel. Let's do another piece at a time. So I have 5x squared y cubed over 30x cubed y squared, and I know you've done some practicing with your exponents. So you can subtract them. If you ever forget, though, you can always write them out. This is x squared is x times x. y cubed is y times y times y. And I have 30. I have x cubed, so that's x times x times x. y times y. And you can cancel. There's an x on top and an x on bottom. It's gone. An x on top cancels with an x on bottom. Okay, and then we also have a y on top cancels with a y on bottom. A y on top cancels with a y on bottom. So we would have... 5. Now notice both x's canceled, two of the y's canceled, so 5y. And then we have a 30. Looks like two x's canceled, I'm left with 1x, and the other y's are gone. Okay, then we can reduce 5 and 30. What well, do you think about 30? What are the factors of 30? Well, 30, you can pick lots of different things, maybe 3 and 10. And 10 is 2 times 5. So 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. 2 times 3 times 5. 5 cancels, 5 cancels. So we're left with y over 2 times 3 times x. 
for y over 6x. Now, please don't feel like I'm insulting your intelligence. Just want to make sure I go through this slowly if you're a little rusty. 5x squared y cubed ab over 30 x cubed y squared ab. So just kind of picking up from here. I want to point out that, again, multiplication is commutative over the real numbers, what we're looking at right here. So I can really reorder this to put the x's sort of numbers first, then the x's and the y's and the a's and the b's if you want to. So again, let's go through it one more time. So an a on top and an a on bottom. All this stuff is multiplied together, so those cancel. These b's cancel. So then you look at 5x squared y cubed over 30x cubed y squared. The other way to do this is to say, well, are these, first off, <laughs> this 30, is it divisible by 5? That would be great if it was. Sometimes they just have some factors in common, but we know 30 is 6 times 5. So you really could even reduce this and say, well, if I divide both by 5, I have a 6 left over. Sometimes you've seen that notation. I know you have. So x squared, y cubed, and I have a 6, x cubed, y squared. And then you look and you say, well, there's x's in the numerator and in the denominator, right? And we have a rule that says a to the m divided by a to the n. We subtract their exponents. That's the same as a to the m minus n. The way I like to do it is I like to look at the ones that are in common, x squared and x cubed, and I subtract the exponents and put the answer where the biggest one was. So there's still a 6 on the bottom. And then I have x squared over x cubed. It's bottom heavy, right? So again, we saw it earlier, x squared. Cancel, cancel. There's one x and it's on the bottom. But you can do it quickly by saying, okay, well, x squared, x cubed, 3 minus 2 is 1. I put the answer where the bigger one was. And then do the same thing with the y's. I have y squared and y cubed. 3 minus 2 is 1. I put the answer where the biggest one was. So we get the same thing. Okay, hopefully that helps.